All right, Doug, is uh, Justin and Adam, they're out of the room, right? They're not coming back? All right, check this out, guys, real quick. I'm going to give away something crazy. This will piss them off. That doesn't matter. They're not going to see this. We're going to edit it, put it up. Here's the giveaway. This is massive. We're going to give away all three bundles that we're doing a promotion for right now. By the way, only 72 hours left for this particular promotional sale. I'll get into that in just a second. But one of you lucky viewers will get all three of them for free, and all three of them give you nine months of exercise programming. The first one is for beginners. The second one is for people who are intermediate. And the third one is advanced. When you combine them all, you pretty much own almost every MAPS program there is. We're going to give all three of them to one of you. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Got to do all those three things. If we notify you, if we like your comment, it's the best comment, then that means you get all three of those bundles free. Now, everybody else... Those three bundles are 70% off right now or more. Huge discount. We only have three days left for this particular promotion. So if you're interested, you want to sign up, you want to do one of these, head over to mapsjanuary.com, click on the one that's right for you, and sign up. Also, if you just want to try one MAPS program, if you want to see what all the fuss is about, do MAPS Anabolic. It's the flagship program. That particular program is 50% off to help people get started or introduced to the MAPS philosophy of training. You can find that one at mapsred.com, but you do have to use the code January50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. One of the best treatments clinically proven to help with depression, anxiety, low libido, low drive, uh, inflammation, it's not a medicine. It's exercise, and it's proven to be better than almost any other medication available. All do right. you think this is uh, common knowledge? Yeah. I, I don't. I do not think, although it's becoming more common. You know, if you look at, and this isn't just my opinion, if you look at the data, look at anxiety and depression, for example, and we're talking about the, the most common forms, right? The kind of mild to moderate forms, because the extreme forms, uh, that's a whole different category. But if you look at the data, when they compare the most effective medic prescription medications that we've had now for decades, right? Like uh, SSRI, um, you know, drugs or other drugs that are similar, and you compare them to consistent exercise, the effects on depression and anxiety are very similar in the short term. In the long term, they start to trend better with exercise. And that's because exercise, you don't build up a tolerance to it like you do with a medication. Uh, you tend to, it tends to become more and more effective as you continue to do it. In fact, if, if you could bottle exercise into a pill, it would be a block, there would be nothing like it in the world. It would be a complete blockbuster. And it's, it sucks that people only uh, connect exercise to the physical yeah. effects. They just think it's work. Yeah. And, and it's the consistency really that provides the value. Once you really start to uh, add that into your daily activities, your daily life. Um, it, it's interesting to me because I, I look at it a lot like unused, unpotential used energy. And, and at the end of the day, like your body starts to kind of like, you know, get restless with that. And it, it if you're all in your head for too long, you, you kind of get into this loop that you can't really break out of. Yeah, there, there's so much to unpack there too. Yeah it, yeah, it definitely improves your physical health, which will also improve your mental health. We know that those are strongly connected. But the process of exercise is very much an empowering one um, where you're out doing it and you're struggling and you're finding that you're able to stay consistent. Oh my gosh, it's working. Look what I'm doing. I, I like this and I feel good about myself. And it, and it just gets better and better over the years. And there's so much, again, there's so much to unpack there why, why exercise is such an effective mental health tool. And nobody really talks about it, right? Everybody talks mm -hmm. about weight loss, looking better, you know, maybe some discussions around mobility and movement and strength, which all great, all good. But I firmly believe the most profound effects that consistent, appropriate, I have to say appropriate, right? Because exercise can be abused just like anything. But the appropriate application of exercise by far is the are the mental health effects. And when I would train clients, it was the mental effects that were that you would see and feel that were more profound. And those are the ones that people actually commented on that shocked them, that blew them away. Like, oh my God, I feel uh, I feel so good and I feel so yeah. happy and this is so weird. Well, most of the antidepressant drugs, aren't they? Their goal is really to to make it so you don't have like the, the high highs and the low lows. It's just to keep you no, kind their, of- their goal is to keep you- Neutral. Subscri subscribing. Well, to keep you <laughs> taking them. Yeah. yeah. But like not to really feel like better necessarily, but just, you know, not- 
not bad. Yeah, I I, I want to be cl- you know very clear that the um, prescription drugs have a, a very they have a place, and I don't want to um, downplay them because I think that they they're, in, in many cases they're life saving. Yeah, of course, but what I'm trying to say is that exercise, appropriately applied exercise, for many cases is so much better. And even if you're on medication, it only will make it that yeah, much more. Yeah, why not do both? Why it mm-hmm. makes it so much more effective. Yeah. We're starting to see now that they're starting to visit exercise as a treatment for mental health issues. And we already see that, right? Mm-hmm. Psychiatrists and psychologists will always will already recommend that people exercise and move and, and do stuff like that. But it's not a part of the protocol. But with the, with, with the clinical evidence, I believe that these, these clinics and, and therapists should, I think a very effective strategy would be to partner with exercise specialists and say, look, here's a deal. Yeah. We're going to do this with therapy. We're going to do this with medication. And also, here's so-and-so, and they're going to help you with exercise and activity because in the studies, it's so effective. I think we're going to have to when you look at, um, you know, we make that comparison about Wally. Hot. Over here. <laughs> you know, we yeah. kind of like lightly joke about that, but there's there's some truth to the potential of us moving in that direction of like, not having to move really to get access, do everything you need to do, make money, whatever. So I think that it's going to become necessary. And I think we're in the middle of that transition right now. And maybe this, the pandemic accelerated that a little bit of people's awareness around why it's so important that you exercise. And I think we're going to start to see that over the next couple of years, more and more people. I mean, and look at these, these businesses, although, I mean, Peloton and them are tanking right now, but like your at home fitness stuff that's becoming more popular and the, like, gyms are blowing up again. Are they still going? I was going to ask you: Have you been following up on like your prediction on what's happening right now? I've are talked we- to a few people that are in the industry. It's and now it's hard to say because part of it could be that the market washed out a lot of competition. Mm-hmm. So what whoever's left now is they are you know they they now own a larger piece of the market potentially, but. Um, you're seeing a surge and I think part of it is because people are feeling really bad, uh, worse than they have in a long time. And it happened so fast, right? In a two year period, our obesity rate, uh, accelerated to the point where we are at the point now with obesity where we would have been maybe in six or seven years at the, at the pace that we had before. So it just sped up. And I, and, and I think people are kind of like, I want to move, you know? So now will it stick? I don't know. That's the hard, that's the hard thing to predict. I hope it does. Right. But I do think that – look, I'll speak personally. Um, I'm, I, I battle with my own uh, demons. I, I've, you know, I, I, I have ADD, and when I was in school, I had trouble sitting still and paying attention, and I can have my own paranoia and all that stuff. Exercise – and I've said this for so long, and I tell this to my wife all the time. It's so therapeutic for me. I don't know where I would be. I could not imagine if I had if, – if for a month and a half, if I couldn't exercise at all. Like, I mean, you guys are looking at me and I know you're trying not to make funny faces. Could you imagine how I would be if I had no, if I couldn't do anything for a month and a half? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so therapeutic to me. It's definitely necessary. Well, most likely you would, you would seek out something else to medicate. F- yeah. To medicate or fill that void. Yeah. And what just happens. What's great is that if you do move in the direction of using fit health and fitness, although it can be dangerous in itself, or I shouldn't say dangerous, it could be unhealthy it could be abused right yeah. like anything with like anything else at least on the way there it's the, you're gonna get a lot of positive benefits from it right because obviously there are people that um, are addicted to exercise and fitness yeah. and their body and looking at themselves that it starts to hurt or harm other parts of their life or people that are connected to them um, but in in the pursuit of that or in the process of that there's a lot of positive health benefits that they get from it, Not mental that, and physical. Yeah, and you're right. And anything can be pathological. I don't care what it is. You can make anything pathological. But if you talk to anybody, and you guys know people like this, if you talk to anybody who's been doing it for a long time, they went through that pat process and then came out of it. It's such a learn. It's the most underrated personal growth vehicle I can think of. You know what I mean? Like it teaches you that you'll never be perfect. That's mm-hmm. an important lesson to learn, right? That oh, and but, and accept it. Mm-hmm. It teaches you that it's okay to fail. You're gonna like you try a new exercise, you suck at it the first fifty times that you do it. it teaches you not to compare to others. You have to, yeah, because it's, like I said, at some point you realize like, oh yeah, I'm never gonna look like Arnold. Did. Like I, I realized that in my late teens, and then I accepted it, and then <laughs> continued. It teaches you to love your body because if you stick with it for twenty or thirty years, you, at some point you, you stop hating yourself because you're starting to enjoy the process. 
it makes you feel self-reliant and empowered. Mm -hmm. You feel empowered because it's something you're doing for your own health and your own sanity and well-being. There's so many lessons, right? Yeah. So it's just you this, literally see progress happen right in front of your face. You do, and so it's just in, it's just this very powerful mental health, personal growth vehicle, and it's never it's almost never talked about in that way. And I feel like that's the angle mm -hmm. that we should talk about it because I think if you set all of the value of exercise on weight loss and how you look, right. you're going to set a lot of people up for early failure, and then they'll get discouraged and they won't do it. But if you tell people, hey, here's how it's going to make you feel. Here's the positive mental health effects. They will feel that. They will yeah. see that. And then, and then what will happen as a side effect is the fat loss and all that other stuff. Do you foresee in the future um, more companies building health and fitness around like the structure of your day at work? Like starting the day off with like a half hour, hour of some sort of physical activity before. We've already talked about like what's this. I think they they did this a long time ago. Like uh, the average hours that the, yeah. the eight hour employee actually works hmm. in the day. It's like not even half. So it's not like it would carve into their productivity at work, like where, oh, shoot, you got we do an hour of fitness in the day. Now you no longer have enough time to write code or do whatever. It's like they already are, are that unproductive as it is. And actually doing something that's physical like that, not only would benefit them physically, but mentally and potentially, we, I mean, we know, I know, it's wondering when other companies will figure this out, they'll be more productive. So at what point do companies start building that into their day. Yeah, you know what the challenge Smart companies will but, they, they yeah. will, but the challenge with that is you're gonna get pushback from yeah. people who are saying, um, I don't want to or Yeah, I, I feel fat chained or I'm not able to. You said that before, but I think so I, I think I mean I think if you give them the option and then you you'd have you couldn't make it mandatory. It has to be part of the culture. I know in Japan, um, and I know Doug, maybe you can correct me, it, it it was it's been a part of the culture for a long time that <clears throat> companies would have employees start the day off with do some tai chi calisthenics already. and uh, exercise. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right? Is that is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And so I imagine it that's so I imagine it would start at a place like that. So I don't I don't foresee your, you know, a Google or Facebook, you know, having a you know strength training workout for hour of four where you're gonna have a lot mm -hmm. of people, oh, I have these injuries, these limitations, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Versus we're going to do something like meditative or walking. Like imagine if it's just like every day. I mean, we, we do this right off air. We, 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 we talk about this where there's times where we get stuck and we're going to, and we'll just interrupt our day and go, Hey, let's just go for a walk. Yeah. And we, we find that so productive, right? Kind of mm -hmm. clears our mind, gets us outside for a little bit. We know. So what happens when you see, I, I foresee something like that. I don't foresee this. And maybe some companies will take it to the, saying. So let's work out. Right. So you're not going to get like the pushback of, I can, if you could walk, walk, yeah. you, you should be able to do it in a structured way where we make sure. And I think just making sure everybody is walking for an hour every day, you'd be amazed on how much that will increase everybody's activity because very few people are even stepping that much in a normal day. I think it all makes sense, but I'm so jaded by the last few years of how pushed down, like logical means of, of keeping you healthy, strong, resilient. Like we're just completely not even part of the conversation. Like we get, we got a lot of work to do to get people off of pharma's teeth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's coming that way right now, don't you feel? Like, don't, I mean, I mean, I think some people, but but honestly, the mass majority of people are still think that like taking pills is going to solve. You problems. know why? It's because it no, it's a decision you have to make for yourself. Exactly. Because it's a, it's not a, it's not a profitable message. So if you're a politician or if you're a company that's selling a product, it is not profitable to sit there and say, hey here's something you could do for yourself and it doesn't cost any money. I feel like it's only going to take one big successful company to implement it and show positive returns for it to kick off though. I mean, look what happened when, and I don't know who did it first. Was it, was it uh, Facebook or Google when they started to disrupt the way your workspace was done? Now yeah. everybody does that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Like that we did, we did work big breakthrough. It was a huge this. breakthrough. We did workspace a very traditional way for decades, yeah. decades. And then all of a sudden, a, a big company comes in and disrupts the way that landscape That's looks. That's a good point. And now everybody models it. So all it's going to take is a a Facebook, a Google, a an Amazon. Yeah, a leader in the industry that's already a successful company to say, you know what? We're going to take care of our employees' mental and physical health, and we're going to start easy with something like, hey, every day, the way your first hour looks is we go on walks or yeah. something. Something. Maybe there's an it. intercom in 50, right. first like, I don't 50 know. minutes. We're going to do these stretches. And right. These I don't know exactly what it looks like, right? But I, I know I, Virgin was, like, before all this stuff, was really making headway with that with a lot of corporate fitness initiatives, mm -hmm. and, and they are doing a lot of cool things. But, yeah. 
I think, I mean, I hope you're right. Like, I hope that there is like a shiny example of that. That's like a very much of a brand that everybody like recognizes and is sort of leading the way in terms of like our employees are doing this. They're way more productive. They're, you know, they're not missing any sick days, like all these benefits. Listen, the, the wild part is if you can, if you can improve it by one to 3%, huge, huge savings, huge, yeah. huge savings. So that's why it, it kind and of, that's, the, and that's the like, math definitely and that's is scratching the surface. That. Right. So that's, that's the part that kind of blows my mind that, that the, the Amazons of Facebook, these companies that employ tens of thousands of people haven't pieced that together. It's like we don't need it to be hella successful. Yeah, we just need it to change one percent of the lives that are out there, and that makes a huge difference. Here, I'll make it even more dramatic. Yeah. Okay, healthy people uh, are more efficient. They make different choices in the market, so healthy people are more likely to buy and want products that serve their true health. Which means you'll have more innovation and more money going to those products versus products that medicate and distract and aren't good for us. Healthy people innovate better, so they're smarter. They innovate better. They solve better problems. Healthy people are less angry. They're less anxious. So you have less actions that are related to anger and anxiety. Healthy people make better parents. They make better partners. If right now I could snap my fingers and make everybody in America just healthy, you would see it would make such a profound difference. It would it would be massive. I'm going to go out and say you don't For even sure. have to make them healthy. You just have to move them in that direction by a couple percent. Yeah. Right. Yep. I mean, that in itself will have enough positive, you know, uh, effects from it that I think will pay back companies, pay back people. I just, I don't know. I feel like we're right on the cusp of this like tipping revolution. Point. Yeah, yeah, of where we're going to go that direction. It is. It is you know, like definitely the resistance changing. Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Doug. Sal, again. Andrew, could you Sal Stradamos yeah. coming out with the uh, predictions? Adam and I were like, you know, the closing <laughs> machines. <laughs> Just threw that in there. That was a big book commercial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Actually, By the way, you can get Sal's it, book at Amazon anywhere. No. It, no, it wasn't. You can Amazon, Target, anywhere you want. Yeah. Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Anyway, hey, I got some. Uh, I I read an article on uh, on the football. Uh, on the football. Yeah, no. By the way, whoa, I know you didn't whoa, watch whoa. it, but some of the I heard some that of the, the games best are just insane. Some playoff of the games best ever. sports ball happened yeah. this weekend. Like all the everything from Friday's <laughs> Warriors the most dramatic game, dramatic finishes to insane. Sunday Sunday night Warriors game and everything in between was just and I so, didn't even watch the UFC fights, which I heard were good too. So explain this to me. Yeah. So I, I don't watch everybody knows I don't watch traditional sports, I don't really care. But when I was a kid in the eighties, I was a big 49er fan, and they're at the, in a, are they make it? They made it to the semifinals. Yeah. So yeah, now, how are they looking? So, they look good, dude. Yeah, they look. good. I mean, our offense uh, didn't do a whole lot, but defense came to play. It was an amazing uh, performance. We got some blocked field goal blocked. Do we know who they're going to play? Yeah, yes, they, they play the Rams. Rams, oh. which is kind of are the Rams worrisome in LA for still? me because we've, we've had their number, but it's like, dude, how many times are you going to have their number before they? Catch us! Wow, that's actually cool. So it's going to be L.A. versus San Francisco. Do we know who, who's going to yeah, be the in, other championship? Mm -hmm. You have the Bengals. You have the Bengals versus the Chiefs. Okay, so Cincinnati we have Cincinnati versus Kansas. City. Well, this City. is cool because California needs a win. So either the Rams or the 49ers are going to the <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, 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 we do. Gavin man. Newsom ain't giving us a win. No, so. we need a win, yeah. man. So I mean, we got the cool. Warriors. We've had we've had the Kings the in, the in hockey. So we've had they were, yeah. California tends to be in the we tend to be in the run of something always. Uh, I mean. We were hosting the uh, the Super Bowl, yeah, the, in L.A. Yeah, at SoFi. Yeah, I want to go to that stadium really bad. Oh, yeah. But I know what you're bringing up right now because I saw the same article and I think it was. Are you gonna hijack my? I was so excited. To show oh, you. I know. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I never you, talk about sports football ball glory. Go I ahead. saw one article. <laughs> I'm know, like, we're I can't wait get to get down the rabbit hole. Right, go ahead. Football. Go ahead. No, there's a whole article about the the Bills and how their strength coach takes squats out of their workouts in season. So mm. when they're in season, they're not doing heavy squats, mm -hmm. and they are attributing that to the fact because they, apparently they're the, they're the least injured team, least injured team. So they, and, he, and they're saying that's one of the reasons why smart, right? yeah. which is like kind of a the it is. Yeah, you know, like it's, we've we've talked about this on on the on the show. Like, and if you, and it doesn't mean that you have to. Uh, here's the thing too that I want to get clear on this because I, I did the article did to they're still deadlifting, they're still doing. So they're not training hard movements. Still doing like split stance squats and all that. Or? Yeah, they're, they're still doing other er, other variations. It's just that heavy squatting can be very taxing on the body, and mm -hmm. it's it's not advantageous to be doing that yeah, in the middle right. of your season. I, I learned this as a trainer early on, training young You're in athletes. Preserve mode. Yes, that that and this I remember learning this as, a, as an early trainer. I had another trainer uh, that worked with me, and he was uh, he trained athletes, and we had this conversation 
about how to train athletes because I had this kid hire me who was going to play, uh, he was going to start playing football. So I said, hey, how do you, like, what's the deal with athletes? And he goes, all right, so here's the deal. He goes, in off season is where you're building. That's yep. where you're training heavy and hard and all you're trying the magic's to gain. there. In season, your job as a trainer is to prevent them from getting injured because yeah. they're, they're already playing so hard mm -hmm. that if you throw this approach where you're trying to build all this muscle and strength while they're playing, you're going to increase the risk of injury. There's so, a fine line with it too. I mean, because uh, I've done seasons where we didn't do any workouts and – you know, at a certain point, you'd get guys that would start dropping because their strengths would would, sure. would drop, you know, significantly. So you do have to incorporate some bit of resistance training, but it definitely has to be more of a preservation mentality. Yes. Right? Yeah, so recover and maintain. Recovering, yeah. you're, you're trying to keep those joints healthy. But like, I I tended to do a lot more unilateral training during season, and I would uh, you know try to make sure I'm mobilizing my joints and and keep that you know routine so that way I'm, I'm not. The impact itself was just so dramatic on, on our bodies out there. Very yeah. similar how we train somebody in pregnancy. It's the same concept. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like if in you, season, yeah. you have the baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, 100%. 100%. And, and at it's that point, baby. you're trying to just maintain what they did leading Health up. Health yeah. and all that stuff. Right, right. But That's, you're not trying to hit PRs. No. Right. Or change up the routine where we're doing all these new things that your body's not used yeah. to. It's like, that's you know what this that's is, not the place to do that. You know what timing. this reminds me of? Right. It's like when we communicate to people about the rest of your life, and if the rest of your life is very stressful and you're getting poor sleep and all that stuff, the last thing you want to do is throw super intense exercise at that. So like, and we're t when we're talking about the Bills, we're talking about the 1% the, the of the 1% of genetically gifted athletes who do nothing but try to be better football players. And yet- they still have to be careful with their workouts in season. Yeah. So you're talking about the average person who your genetics are no, nothing like theirs. See, yeah. when I see an article like that, I think the thing that's always interesting to me is that it blows my mind that there's still a lot of professional athletes that are that shitty coaches, trainers that are surrounding yeah. them. Gross. That like that's like a duh thing. It's a that, who you know kind of a club. The, it's like that. That article, like you're talking about the NFL, they should be so much further ahead than any of us as yeah. far as trainers. Where that's that's kind of common. If you're a good trainer, it's kind of common no. knowledge. Like you know that when you're training. I an feel athlete. like we know most of the really elite, you know, world class trainers that are training these pro mm -hmm. athletes. There's not a lot actually. It was actually kind of enlightening to well, see. Do you not? You do you guys know the the kind of controversy that happened back with um, Tom Brady when he was with uh, the Patriots mm -hmm. and his trainer? So there was like there was a lot of controversy around because he he trains with a he has like a holistic coach mm. who's about energy and mental well being and mm -hmm. have the synergy between that and his physical body mm -hmm. and what stresses and so he does all that work and he's actually doesn't work with the 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 team's doctors the team's he's trainers got his own people he's got his own people now isn't he older and he's he's an older player he's right? the, like bro he's, he's yeah, what he's dude. doing at his age is unbelievable oh, okay. insane. so and that's why he won't break from it he's like what he's the, and this guy's been with he him found for a, a, yeah, a very a long time winning but, recipe so what ended up happening was more and more players were wanting that well because mm -hmm. that's a problem it's a business dude of course and so it got to a place where uh the team wouldn't allow his trainer to his trainer used to be able to come in the locker room and and do his rehab yeah, and yeah. was on the sideline just with undermining their entire program yes yeah so and because it was doing that and was starting to get a pool in the locker room they told him he couldn't come in the locker room anymore so he couldn't be on the on the sidelines anymore so brady used to have to do weird shit like freaking get his rehab done in like a closet <laughs> imagine someone like him like his like yeah they were like, like in, what, did, what are they doing in the closet he walks in the in the closet they close the door and he comes out and he feels better yeah, yeah. and i'm sure he's moaning in there and yeah, stuff like that, oh. yeah. Oh, that's Ooh. hard. But that's it's crazy. just it's it's interesting that you here you have at, at that high of a level you've got so you've got the the greatest of all time and at his position and he has figured this out of like wow there is a better way to train train the body for like for a sport longevity and stuff like that yet it doesn't align with the current training regimen that these guys are on and so it's completely ostracized no nope, wow. can't have it in here no no you can't do it it's like it's wow. insane dude. justin when you said yeah. you did the when you figured this out as an athlete with the unilateral and stuff like that was that high school or college where you figured college. that out 
It, yeah. So in high school, you were doing the whole. We didn't know anything yeah. in high school, dude. Yeah. Like, Speaking of yeah, which, uh, your guys' high school graduation pictures. <laughs> Actually, can I say this right now? You were by far the handsomest dude, guy. What are you talking about, dude? He still is. What the fuck are you I talking liked, about? Like, <laughs> I think he's most Bro, liked. it's so funny. <laughs> I, I didn't even remember how. You were handsome, dude. I, I saw the picture. I'm like, no look at this kid. For like that jawline, decades, huh? Bro, you look like an Amber Crombie, like, <laughs> you know, just a little bit more masculine looking. Like a neo-Nazi Amber Crombie. Do you remember how much you weighed? Wait, because you had to shave Yeah, you shaved I was oh, like, I don't I have think no you do. Tan, you dude. did not look like that then. I feel like some people used to give me grief about that. I'm like, ah, no, I'm not that guy. I'm just helmet. an athlete. You know? I, my head doesn't fit in my helmet. What, do you, okay, what was your height and weight around that time? Do you remember? I was 185, yeah. 185? 185, yeah. six foot. Oh, wow. So I was six foot 195. How about you? So I was actually like a 5'11 or 6 foot, and I was like one. Oh, you weren't even at your peak yet. Oh, no, I grew out of high school. Okay. So I grew all the way till I was like 22-ish, I'd say. I kept going. You went through like an in sync phase there. With yeah, the yeah, that's what that Oh, your hair. You know, everyone <laughs> said that. I hated in sync though, growing up. That was not a band I was into you at all. You had Top Robin hair. Yeah. Was, <laughs> what was you know, the inspiration so there? The, was that, okay, uh, so no, I never I never dyed my tips. What that was is in sports, I shaved my head, and uh, what there was a couple seasons where all the players we bleached our head uh, so, so it we grew out that way so it grew out that way uh, so i never i've never bleached yeah, just a little, my bit, little bit of a timberlake okay. look on that. i mean i'm not gonna lie i liked the way it looked back then that wasn't <laughs> fucking popular so it wasn't like <laughs> you know but i mean i didn't have i didn't well, have hey, the, if it hey, works for the ladies i didn't have the money whatever, to go dude. have a hairstylist yeah. fucking tip my hair dude like that so i i did myself bleached just my hair outside? yeah burnt my fucking scalp and did all that oh, and then it grew out and then that's what it would look like when it would dude i had my so the reason why i took a picture of that so we're at my parents house and we're having dinner or whatever yeah. and my daughter walks over my mom has yeah. this shrine of her <laughs> kids high school graduation pictures so my daughter walks up to it and she goes you did have a ton of hair yeah dude. so then she's just making fun of me the whole time like wow you and my it son looks like he's like how man, old were you i'm like I'm eight, like 18 he goes you don't look like you're 18 you look like you're 30 <laughs> so we're <laughs> going back but dude i had hella hair you know why i don't think i'm bald bro because I had hell, I think I, I would be bald if I had. I had a normal lot amount too, of hair. Bro, it's still, did you have thick ass hair? Yeah, I did. That was I remember, like one of the things that like uh, hairdressers and barbers and stuff used to say. Man, your hair is so thick. I actually used to hate how thick it was. Me too. Because it used to get nappy and curly. Oh, yeah, dude. Like yeah. Oh, bro, I'd wake up in the yeah, morning. Your son, like your son. Look, I look just like your son. Did you? Your, okay. Yeah, yeah. Your son and I, like his build, his hair. Like, mm. I mean, stylistically, things we're into totally different, yeah. but the way he looks was, I look like yeah. that. No, dude, my hair was so big in the morning that I'd get up and I'd walk to the bathroom and I'd feel mm. it shift from you side to side. like the Tony Danza helmet hair? Hella hair, dude. Yeah. So much hair. And then, and then Doug, Doug, the picture he sent that he said it was his <laughs> high school picture. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the hieroglyphic. The hieroglyphic. <laughs> <laughs> he was in high school. And they he drew <laughs> mine in a cave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looked just like me, though. That's yeah. so good. Uh, you know what? Uh, I bet you look almost identical to where you were in high school, Doug. Uh, Probably. Could you not find one? Could you not find Did you look for one? You know one? what? When I moved to Japan, I stored all my yearbooks and everything with a friend. The idiot... Got rid of it, almost everything. Oh in my life. man, bummer. So wow. I I don't have any yearbooks, anything from my. That's terrible. Yeah, that's horrible. That's stupid. No, you guys posted that, and I was like, thankfully I was at my parents' house because it was my dad's birthday. And we're all there, mm -hmm. so I was like, my mom like, oh, rushing, like I have like a picture. Yeah, yeah. Like she's like, gets excited that like anytime I have to like find some like random pictures. Dude, she's like, got a, like, I haven't catalog. seen that one of you. That's the first time I've seen yeah. that one. Before. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, I don't even know if I should bring this up because I will not provide a picture of this. But there's a picture of me. <laughs> so my. my my daughter was at my mom's house because my mom invited her over to do some baking and it's really cute. They do, they, they'll cook together and stuff. So I go to pick her up and my daughter and my mom are going through all these old, my mom has so many photo albums that are just been around forever. So they're going through and I'm looking at them and there's this picture of me. I'm probably 20, maybe 19 and I have my shirt off and I'm posing next to my, I don't know why, my grandparents are next to me, I'm flexing. <laughs> <laughs> And it was it must have been one of the dirtiest bulks I've ever done in my entire life. I just look like a big meatball, like just standing there, you know? And so yeah. my daughter looks at it and she goes, what the hell, dad? I'm like, <laughs> shut up. I'll do my best, you know? I've got this picture of us when we were, is my best friend and I when we were uh, freshman, so freshman year in college. So we're just out of high school. So I'm into working out by this time. And the, our perception of like how buff we thought we were, you know? And we were, we were driving out in the country somewhere. And for some weird reason, we thought it would be cool to get out of our car and go take our shirts off and take a picture out like on like 
like we're ripping the barbed wire fence. So, this, <laughs> so there's this. I've got, planned. I've got hey, this. Hey, picture. Like, hey bro. Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to actually remember. Like, did, did we like drive? Like, it's out in the middle of like, nowhere. Dude, I got this idea. He's all, yeah. hey, listen, you know what'll be sexy? Yeah, yeah. 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 dude, it's had to be some stupid conversation yeah. like that. You know, what'd be cool actually is if we we'll barbed wire these fence, pictures to we'll the be jacks. all like we're jacked. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bar my <laughs> man. You sure your friend wasn't just trying to get you to take your shirt off? Yeah, right. That's probably what's going on, right, bro? You should take a picture naked. Yeah, that would look really good. Sun's not hitting you right. I got some oil. Oh, yeah. wow. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> anyway, dude. Yeah, so, so I, you know, I get, you guys know I'm, so that old, that picture of me, I told my daughter, I'm like, well, I was trying to put on weight. That's why I look like a big, and she's like, well, you're eating a lot more now, which is true. I am. But you know what's hard? Mm. Getting the amount of grams of protein is very, cha- I'm starting to track a little bit. Yeah. Holy cow, it's hard because I'm trying to eat 200 grams of protein a day. That's, so it's a lot. Yeah. Bro, I have to eat 50 grams of protein four times. In the day, to you do know that. what's funny to me yeah, is the people you concentrate on it. It's it's a it's a monster. It's it, a lot, dude. It's people who think because it like I always get this with clients, and I'm there's someone I guarantee listening right now like, oh, I get plenty of protein. I love meat. I eat lots of meat, you know, so I don't need to tra- track. Just see what happens. Yeah, carbs track are for, easy. Track for one, week. and here's the thing: day in and day out. Like sure, yes, maybe you're right. have, maybe you have a day where you hit 250 because it was yeah. just like a real crazy heavy meat day, and then the next day you have what, no appetite. Yeah, you'd be so surprised on how how few of people, especially when you get to like the size you're at, we were over 200 pounds, and you're trying to get 200 grams of protein consistently hit that. It was one of the single most important things that I kind of figured figured out on my you know fitness journey was wow, I not only do I grossly underconsume protein, but um, I'm very inconsistent when I actually do. So even when I kind of totally. do, I don't hit it. I yeah, because when I when I now as I started to really kind of pay attention, when I'm eating high protein, I'm hitting 150. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm 50 grams below that. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm throwing shakes in this and that, and then you know, obviously, this this is one of the reasons why I think Magic Spoon or one of our sponsors, right, so valuable. Yeah. Here you oh, have I would, a have, I would have loved just another Magic way to incorporate as a young teenage we're, or twenty year old guy. Where are you going to get? Take. Where are you going to get a, a you know a cereal that tastes like Fruit Loops? Yeah, right. that you're going to eat a decent bowl and get forty grams of whey protein. Let's yeah. be honest, you're going to eat it in the morning and you're going to eat it at night. Because, totally, you know yeah. that's just a nice like treat. But yeah, you're able to get more protein he, that way. Here's how I would do it. Right, I would eat my normal meal and then I'd say I'm off by fifteen or twenty grams. Small bowl. Yeah. Magic well, that's how I that's how I use it. I use it even now. Like if I'm right now, I'm not tracking. I'm not on like my mm. protein intake. Like I probably should be. But when I was competing and I was tracking everything, like I would eat my meal and then that was like my dessert because it's so easy. It's mm. so palatable and tastes so good. Yep. And it was my replacement of my my sweet tooth for things like ice cream. And it was like instead I'm going to get this 40, 50 grams of protein after I just had a full solid meal. It was like the way I guaranteed. This hitting. actually is kind of a bummer because I just did this whole like speech for the high school football team. I just started up their workouts again and I was trying to talk to them about, you know, hitting that one to one sort of ratio of protein and how how difficult it is and was just talking about, you know, all the whole food sources and kind of going through the list and, you know, mm. protein powders that you could probably get from, but you know, high school kids, come on. Magic Cereal? spoon would be easy. Dude, what I mean, why haven't you asked to do that? I know you took the, the protein powder to them, but you should we have probably 50 boxes back so, there. Go bring every a box for every no, kid. No, this for is sure. What, this, I want to introduce it at least. Yeah. This is what I was talking to Justin about. I was telling Justin because he's the coach, right? How cool would it be if he brought you and me in there yeah. and all we did is talk about mass and strength building yep. and we could bring bo- like boxes of cereal for the kids at the very end, but we could talk to them about this. Are you guys meeting already? Yeah. I just started. So I had a, um, we had the banquet Sunday and uh, last week I started testing them out. And so today was the very first implementation of the new program that's going to go all the way into the summer. Now, I wasn't sure you were going to come back or not. Were you on the fence back and forth? I felt like you weren't for sure going to do it. Yeah, well, I didn't want to overextend myself. You know, I got a lot to contribute and try to manage, you know, between, you know, my family, the business. And like, I just, I didn't want to like, you know, overcommit. And so I was like kind of back and forth. But this year I'm like, I really wanted to establish a good off season training for Mm -hmm. the kids. So I put a lot of work into that. So that way it's like basically something I can hand off. And I have like the athletic director. It's great. They do like a zero period. So he actually runs them through weight training anyway. And I talked to him about it. And so he's running my program with these kids and I'm coming in whenever I can, I'll show up in the morning. And so I want to establish it the first few weeks, especially. And then, 
Uh, we're going to be testing them out. We're going to be keeping them consistent. So, so now, when valuable. We, we were flying. We were looking over that. Have you implemented that? Is it going? Yes. Yeah, so now we, we oh. just started our first, and, and it's all like it's great because – First, and so I took your advice too. So we're doing like two isometric heavy days uh, for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're doing more of a, a dumbbell uh, unilateral uh, type of a, a workout. So that way, did you look at see. it? I did. Yeah, it's sick. Oh, it's right? brilliant. Yeah, that was my one, my one little critique. I mean, I thought the programming was perfect on it, and uh, but I was like, you know, isometrics for a kid for you know three or four weeks consistently with no traditional weight training i'm like yeah not that it isn't incredibly incredibly effective and yeah. smart i was like i think you just interrupting just that with like mentally some, really uh, yeah, yeah mentally and that way too they can actually see Tough. how it's translating yep. into like their regular training like I oh agree. wow i'm getting yeah. better at these movements that's a good call yeah the thing about isometrics too is that the Strength gains come fast and furious, but then they start to plateau and yep. unless you in, you also incorporate some full range of motion. Well, I, that's I a figured, great combination. Yeah, I kill a couple birds with a stone this way because there's a lot of uh, imbalances to address, and it's like I can take time by like going around and yeah. while they're struggling in like ten to fifteen seconds of uh, you know hell uh, by you know adjusting their form and their posture with it. So that's so awesome. Yeah, it reminds. Okay, uh, you guys saw that clip I sent you guys of the. It was like a pro soccer player in Europe. I got to find it. And he was getting interviewed and they surprised him with, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, by the way, is because, you know, you don't have to coach these kids. This is not, this is, you're doing this because you find value in, and, yep. and the kid, this is so valuable to kids, this kind of lead, you know, leadership and having someone there who's uh, like a mentor. And it reminded me of this clip where there's this pro football play, soccer player, I'm sorry, and the reporters surprise him by bringing one of his English teachers from high school. And he had talked about how this English teacher literally had such an impact on him mm -hmm. that it kept him in school and kept him focused. So this man shows up. Hello, Ian. Long time no see. Mr. Pigman. <laughs> You're alive. I'm alive, he says. How are you doing? I can't believe it. Someone said you was dead. And as you see, I'm very much in, and I'm so glad you've done so well with yourself. And he's by this point, the, the yeah, teacher you now showed that to me and try to make me cry. Yes, he's I didn't see it. Asshole. Oh, bro, it's it, <laughs> it made me tear up. <laughs> oh, really? He walks up, and this guy, it, it's a real touching video. Yeah, he's like sure. a pro soccer player, obviously very wealthy, whatever. And then in comes this 70 something year old man, and he looks at him, and the look on his face, and he goes, Oh my god, you're still alive because he was a long time ago. He goes, Absolutely, and then. That's it. He loses it. He starts tearing up, starts crying, and he's like, "You, you, you changed my life, and this and that." Like the impact one teacher. Could it would have. be kind of cool, actually, if each of us picked one of the teachers because I, I can think of like one teacher that made that impact on mm. me. Like where like it shifted. I think I could pick a few that had a negative impact. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's not the idea of this <laughs> exercise. I, but how cool would that be, actually, for us to each reach out? Or, like, I have no idea where yeah. she's at, or I don't even know if she's still teaching now. Mm. Or I mean, it's been so long. Right? Must so say her name or no? Huh? You're, no, I won't say her name okay. until I can figure it out, right? So yeah. why don't, why don't I, I track her down and see if we can find her? But I think that would be kind of cool if we shared that. It'd be kind of cool to like yeah. call them or say something like nice well, about them. Honestly, this program is is what saved me as, as a high school kid. So it, that's what had the most impact on me over any teacher that I had. Uh, and it was just because of the headspace that I was in and the anger issues and the, you know, just, just everything that I was fighting like internally. And it was just such mm -hmm. an outlet for me and such good role modeling um, for me to understand what it was even to be a man and like to, to, to take care of people around me and, and like always, you know, pay attention to those little things, those little things <clears throat> add up, like how you do every, something is how you do everything. It's, it's basically you know, what I learned uh, going through the program is just like, you know, just handling everything and, and, and owning up to it and having responsibility over it. Was, yeah, this, so this, awesome. was this during the times when you were struggling with your sexual identity that I, time? I or definitely <laughs> thought about a lot of weird things. And, um, this is when you're drawing the, the, the helicopter. <laughs> Lots of pictures in your sky. A lot of dick pics going on. 
<laughs> yeah, inanimate objects I was attracted to. It was weird. Weird times. You, know, you kind of make your way through. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. Don't what tell me you guys hey, do. Why, do you guys have, why do you have such a big shampoo hey, bottle? Hey, speaking of weird times, I'll get you out of this one. So thanks, transition thanks out of this. <laughs> Weird time. Yeah. Hey, the, did you uh, listen to All In? The, the Chamath is... Uh, uh, oh, it's a... Man... I'm so disappointed in our guy, bro. Yeah, I think he 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 kind of stood his ground, but he also kind of no, he did it. Cowered a little bit. No, uh, standing his ground would have been fuck all y'all. Yeah. Listen to the whole show. Don't take a, a 10 second clip of what I said yeah. and take it out of context yeah. and try and crucify me. Listen, and, and not to mention the no, guy no, who has he has time for context, it, it, so especially a guy like that who is like he has. Uh, I mean, he his family can relate to a, a lot of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he's like numb to that. It's not like this super privileged person that everybody can crucify. No, right you know away. what, dude? I was as I was uh, listening to it, I was getting so heated, right? And I'm ah, I'm speaking I up was or too. whatever. I was all mad. And uh, I was in the car with my son, and so my son, he's he's he was listening to something else, and he turns it off, and he's like, "What's going on? Why are you so mad?" And so I'm like, you know, I said people confuse. Uh, they think that like things like love. And care and whatever is feelings. I said it's not. It's actions. It's not <clears throat> feelings. If you really want to see what people care about, don't ask them what they care about. Watch their actions. That will tell you what they actually care about. Because people love to say that it's. It's. I know. I hate to use this word because everybody uses it, but it's virtue signaling. Oh, I care about X. You know, I care about the climate. Do you really? Let me In see the your pursuit of uh, awareness. Yeah, I care about this. I care about that. Your actions tell you. Like, ask anybody, do you care about your health? And everybody will say yes. Look at their actions and you'll know. We have plenty of awareness. Yeah. Or people days. say, oh, I love so and so. Oh, but you abuse them and you don't take, like, that's not love. Like, yeah. it's all about actions. And what he was saying on there is people don't care. They say they do, but if you look at their actions, they're full of shit. Everybody wants to act like they care because they want a virtue <clears throat> signal to everybody. And he's being. It is so true. That is so, so true. And the problem is, is that what happens with the feeling thing that everybody falls in love with, oh, I feel particularly, and they don't want to do anything, is we end up passing policies that feel good, but we don't pay attention at all to the consequences. It yeah. feels good to pass a policy. For example, they were talking about the Uyghurs in, in China, and okay, well, and he was saying basically it's below my line, mainly because he has no way to impact it. And what his impact, the real impact he has is on other things. So that's where he's placing his, you know, what he calls care, which is literally his action. And then they were arguing and say, well, what, what do you, what do you, what should we do? Go to war? Like stop trading with China? Here's the, the, the harsh truth. The harsh truth is things are very complicated. And if we trading with a country like China that we may not agree with all the time is one of the best ways to prevent war and one of the best, best ways to prevent, um, you know, just, Terrible things from happening. The Soviet Union and the U.S. were so close to war many times precisely because we didn't trade with each other like we do with China. So things are never black and white, and we need to pay attention. And also, stop saying you care about shit when your actions don't show it because it's fake. It's not true. The truth of that – here's the truth. I'm going to be honest. Here's what I care about. My family, my friends, my business, and then it starts to spread out, and my care starts to happen less and less. So you tell me about something. I'll feel bad. Yeah. But do I really care about a city in America somewhere else? Well, no, no. My actions show that I actually care about the people around me. And I'm just being honest. This yeah. is just how it is. Well, I think Sachs hit it right on the head when he when that's exactly what he said. You know, he said the reason why so many people were triggered is because Chamath struck a chord. Yep. You know, it stung a little bit because there's a there was a lot of truth to it, and it yeah. wouldn't have it wouldn't have stung so bad if it wasn't true. People would just ah whatever he's full of shit, some billionaire talking shit or whatever. No, but the fact that it it upset so many people just highlights that it's an issue that that's how most people actually feel based off of their actions. What they do, mm -hmm. yeah. I was I was I was disappointed in the apology. I hate when we give in to the mob. Yeah. I hate what I mean, and that's just just simply for that. Not that could he have uh, said it in a, a, a more politically right. correct way. Could he have been more, sensitive? more sensitive? I'm not saying that he it. couldn't have been. I yeah. don't, you know what I'm saying? But what I cannot stand is this: that we we all just submit to the the, the mob as soon as they come after. And who him. is the mob? The mob is a bunch of people on social media that want everybody else to think that they're so good that they care so much and they're so enraged. Yeah. When if we had the ability, I wish we did, I wish we had the ability to identify each and one of these people and go through their life and point out to them how full of shit they are. Everybody would shut the hell up well, if we were able to do that. Yeah, and it's just interesting to me that it, whatever the situation is, like there's so many different things that, um, 
you know, around the world globally that are atrocities and things that we could like really hyper focus on. It's like whatever's in the media tends to be like everybody's like, I can't believe you're not behind this cause. It's like, I'm behind this cause and I'm still focused on this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why are you deterring me from making an impact and a difference here by just inundating me with, you know, a million other problems? It's again, you got to you got to look at the controllables. Well, you, you can never you'll never win. No, no, it's, 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 it's I mean, I don't endless. care. I don't care if you're helping out a hundred different countries and you're and you're working towards fixing all these issues. Like, there's still one you're gonna miss. Yeah, there's always gonna be one that you, you you're not helping or you're not putting any focus on. Is it, does that make you a bad person? Like, no, I don't I don't think so. And it's I, like when you when you see a billionaire who donated ten million dollars to a charity, and then you have people go, "Oh, he's got billions of dollars. He only donates ten million. I'd like to see your bank account, how much you donated. Yeah. You might only have $1,000, but I bet you didn't, no didn't donate 10 yeah. or one, yeah. right? It's the hypocrisy that's so annoying to me. And we have to look at the consequences of our policies. I'll give you guys a really good example. Okay, here's a great example. I think we can all agree in here that 10-year-olds should not be working in factories, okay? I think that's, uh, I don't think, it's very. I don't, I don't, there's not very many people that would think that that's a good idea. I don't know if they choose to. Well, 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 hold on. Well, hold on. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm being serious. No, no. At, at 10 years old, I was trying to work. No, no, I got you. So okay. let, me, let me keep going. Right? <laughs> I think I think it's, I think it, if you went into and you saw a factory, bad conditions, a bunch of 10-year-olds working, be like, man, that sucks. So let's say we go to a third world country. Uh, you know, here we are, America, powerful and rich. We go in there and we say, oh, all these 10-year-olds in these factories, they shouldn't be working. So then the politicians are like, here's a feel-good policy. We're going to ban those factories and we're going to use our force and strength to make it happen. And it sounds good and it feels good. So we do that. But then let's think about it. We have to think this through. What are the I already know what the unintended consequences Now you've got a bunch of 10-year-olds selling their bodies on the streets. Yeah. yeah and, or and, and or, what if, or what if half of those 10-year-olds are one of five kids that all have to work to help the family survive and feed and put food on the table and now you've just pulled 15% right, so or 20% of their weekly income that they Listen, my dad started yeah. working after second grade and, and it wasn't it's because they were poor. If you made it illegal for him to work, they would have it would have been so much worse. Now I'm not saying it's a good thing. All I'm saying is things are very complicated yeah. and we have to look at the consequences. We can't pass things because they play feel it all the good. way out. Yeah. You got to say, okay, I know that feels good, but let's look and see what will actually happen. And we make like for example, we could put, you know, put our foot down and be like China is, you know, communist. They they don't believe in the same ideals. They're doing all this bad stuff. We're going to ban all trade with China. Okay, what are the potential consequences of that? You are 10 steps closer to armed conflict. Yep. And the, the the fact that we trade with each other actually makes creates more wealth for for poor people. It actually does. And so it's like, okay, well, how can we do this in a way that's smarter and not just feel good? So it's just complicated, but we, we want a virtue signal so bad. We want to make everything so black and white. It doesn't work that way. We have to be smart. You know what else is really complicated that they got into? I don't know if you got into it on the show. How far did you get? Did you get to where they're talking about the monopolies and what's going no, on I with didn't. Microsoft and Activision and stuff? Uh -huh. Oh, so that's really interesting. Did you guys see the news on that? That mm -mm. Microsoft just acquired Activision? Really? Oh, wow. Activision is the ones who, who I mean, they're uh, gaming. Yep. Yeah. They have uh, Call of Duty, the rights to don't that. they have Tony Hawk? I, yeah, they have a bunch, yeah. right? So they, but Call of Duty is the big one, right? Call, Call of Duty, Duty has yeah. got maybe Doug can look up how many subscribers or how many people play the game Call of Duty, um, but it's like you know I think it's like fifty million or more, mm -hmm. and that uh, they are now acquiring Activision, which will they'll now get all those people, and so what the conversation they're having is like you know when do you block these acquisitions because it, they are they are right. they're dominating so much, very mm -hmm. similar to when Facebook bought Instagram. You know, I don't think they realized what that was allowing Facebook to do to get mm -hmm. everybody because Facebook had everybody on desktops, but they didn't have everybody on their on their phones. Right. And Instagram basically allowed them to because everybody who has a yeah. phone is also practically on Instagram. And so now they've captured that. So it, it does. And I was listening to them go back and forth. And I don't even know where 100 percent where I stand on, like, how much the government should intervene and block monopolies. I have, from a, happening. I have a very strong opinion about that. My, my my opinion is so long as there's no hard government barriers to enter the market, you if if a company owns seventy percent of the market, which is what would be they would consider a monopoly because there is no pure monopoly. The only pure monopolies that exist are markets where the government 
uses their force and says no one else can compete. For like, example, like post office like, or, or creating our currency. Like yeah. there's a monopoly for for dollars, right? The central the, the, the our central bank makes that. it yeah. right. <laughs> so if there's no if there's if there's no market barriers from the government and a company owns seventy percent, it's because they're doing a damn good job, uh, yeah. and because we want them to own seventy percent in the market. So I have no problem with that. The problem is when there's a company that owns a big share, and then to enter that market, there's such crazy, insane regulations, which are typically put in place. Now, the other argument the, 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 on the other side of that, that that someone would say is that, well, now this this company that has this monopoly has so much control. They have control of price. They have control of the, the labor market related to that. They can... They can all of a sudden boost everybody by 20% up and nobody... There's they no can, and guess what? And if any competitors even came close to starting to come up, they could acquire them and squash them. Yeah, so. they, they, theoretically, but it doesn't happen. So uh, if, if you look at the Fortune 500, how many companies in the Fortune 500 were there 20 or 30 years ago? Right. A very small percentage, right? Um, MySpace at one point owned social media. Obviously, they're totally gone. Blockbuster, Blockbuster yeah. owned video. So if you had a company that had 70% market share... And then they acted like this evil, you know, this this you know, fake theoretical person who's like, we're going to double the price of everything because we can, because we own. You'll create a market pressure that will just dr bring in new competitors. So at what point, at what point do you think government comes in and should block monopolies? I don't think they should. I Ever. Don't, they won't exist. I think what government should do is protect uh, its citizens. So make sure a company maintains its integrity. If they, That's what we have the courts for. If they lie, if they rip you off then you're definitely screwed. But if a company's doing well and there are low barriers to enter that market, that means that the the consumers are saying this is who we want. And I, like I said, uh, you won't find 100% market share ownership hmm. of a company in a market like that. You'll only find it if it's illegal to compete against them, and that's government can only do that. Only government can make it illegal yeah. through you know through fines and legislation. And yeah, and I think so many people think that they're so bad because they, they, we're so you know, anti-capitalist and we think that everybody's evil that has these big massive companies. But the truth is, the many times, if not all, most times, the consumer is the one that wins out of this. Yep. You're using the example of like Disney Plus, right? With uh, Marvel and uh, Star Wars, yeah. and and because they own the rights of all that, which is arguably creating a monopoly on all these sure. you know, very popular uh, segments. Now they all own, but as a consumer, now all I have to do is go to Disney and I have access to all of it. Versus if yeah. Marvel had its own streaming service, and then I had also had to go to Star Wars to mm -hmm. get my. So now because Disney owns all that, it allows me. Do you to remember the go net neutrality for a cheaper price? Do you remember the net neutrality debate? Yeah. So we have uh, we actually recorded podcasts discussing this a while ago, and you can go back and see that what I said was exactly right. Everybody said, if we don't have these net neutrality laws, these big companies like Verizon or whatever, they're gonna they're gonna raise their prices and do this and and create monopolies. Guess what's happened since then? Way more. First of all, efficiency, services, products, everything's exploded. Yeah. So it just doesn't work out that way. It's a, it's a, it's a not a pipe dream. It's like a, a pipe nightmare that they try to sell you. Well, and the acquisition usually isn't very successful anyway. Yeah, you know, like seventy five percent so, fail. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a real valid strategy for these big companies to like acquire. You know, a lot of these like up and coming. So there is always going to be competition at the end yeah. of the day. Like you said, there'll be signals for things that people want something different. Yep. They'll they'll come up and like so or, or that what Snapchat didn't you know they they held out and they didn't get acquired they had many offers yep. and didn't and so it's you know you'll see I, I don't know I think it just sort of self regulates the yeah it does and unless again there's a law or there's laws that say you can only for example in California there's laws that like I have to work with PG and E so I'm screwed like well that sucks yeah, yeah. that's that's a monopoly so, right yeah. and now if they said no anybody you can I, work with I anybody. still feel like like Xfinity is a monopoly yeah. like Comcast we need, we need more competition <laughs> yeah but look guys. what's happening yeah we're, we uh, need it. streaming has come along is gonna put those guys out of business yeah. if they don't get their shit together yeah yep. absolutely so I mean beautiful it's it's been disrupted like crazy no yes. it's, a, it's an yep. interesting thing to, to kind of chew on a little speaking bit speaking of disrupting um have, when's the last time you guys went up to Santana over here and went to the Viore store do you know, I haven't York. been to Santana in a while. So I, I've been up I, I there went now a, a few times. A couple times. months ago. Couple okay. Months so ago I went a few, and every time I go, I always, you know, I pay attention because Viore is one of our, our partners. And they're right a, almost across the street from Lululemon, which it's is a like, beautiful store. Which is there. like their competitor, right? Yeah. yeah. And the last, every time I've gone, Lululemon, slow as hell. Viore, 
full of people. Oh, wow. Oh, Word, yeah. Words out, dude. Oh, so yeah. I wonder if it's that or there's something about the newness, right? If it's new, the new kid on the block and so people are all curious about it. Or I wonder if they are they really starting to chip into their Bro, market Bro, they're share? exploding. Yeah, their growth is ridiculous. I, I would like to see their pace of growth. Now, it's hard to compare because Lulu's so big that once you get to a certain size, it's hard to grow at the same yeah. pace you did before. Well, yeah. And Lulu just did well, the move with uh, uh, Mirror, right? So they, oh, yeah. Yeah, they acquired Mirror. So they've got, now they're going that direction also. So that's going to be huge. But yeah, when I, when I go, and I'll go in there sometimes and then and I'll, I'll say hi to the staff or whatever and I'll see people and I'll, and people will tell me, oh, I love, I used to get uh, Lulu. Now I just come to Viore. Yeah. It's so much better. Yeah. Well, I they're mean, crushing. anecdotally, I've heard a lot of uh, women converting more so because I feel like that was like the big yep. step for going from Lululemon, you know, mainly for women because it started out, you know, they, they were like very focused on leggings mm -hmm. and, you know, all that. But like I've heard from a lot of women, they prefer Viore now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, Viore did the reverse, right? So yeah. Viore focused on men first and then tackled the the woman market the, and Lulu did the opposite. They focused on women first and with that, which what a brilliant strategy for your Viore instead of like trying to you know go straight at the monster handle what they're great at first they go in the back door and go like oh you guys did a pretty bad job with men mm -hmm. so we're going to crush it with men and then we'll backdoor you with a woman which line. honestly is mm -hmm. harder the uh well i don't know the female market's so much bigger and they're such a they're they're actually the, yeah i would make the case that they're that, the biggest consumers but right? you're also going after the the leader in that space so i, I, right. I, I think yeah. that was a, i think that was a strategy i mean it yeah. was a smart move i actually just saw they had this vest i think it's called echo something that i want to get that's oh, on, yeah. on my list it's like a padded like uh I saw that yeah, yeah. you saw that one yeah 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 keep the chest warm in the arms yeah cool. i was gonna say you gotta get those yeah. arms, my arms uh, get hot you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> breathing room there yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah no i was trying to get one of those atlas jackets i like those those are pretty dope yeah. you got the you got the flannel from there right i yeah. still haven't i haven't bought their flannel yet i want to try their their flannel because i have a couple different they're flannels great like. yeah actually they, they held out for a while and i kept hammering them you guys gotta get a flannel you know that's my thing and finally come out but it's really nice like they did a quality job of oh. it so you know, we were talking about the streaming stuff. If you guys uh, watch with the stock market right now, it's crazy, right? Oh, it's cr it's down. And Netflix, Big time. Netflix is Netflix came out and talking about their growth that they're just not going to be able to keep up with what their growth was been like the last five six years. Uh, coming out immediately and saying that, and their stock is like tremendously down right now. Everything is down. They just, you know, the one thing that they didn't do, like at one point, you capture. A, a big bulk of everybody who's like yeah. streaming and yeah. they got them all and it's like well, it's so competitive now yeah, yeah well yeah just trying to keep them which is more difficult that's just it so, and that's what they were saying is one of the hardest things for them is to keep people entertaining and stay there like they are they came Especially out the gate the pace so, they're at yeah they came out so strong with all this incredible content for relatively ch but nothing they, were, they had nobody competing with them yeah and now you got all and kinds now they of, have competitors yeah. and they and they really haven't branched anywhere else they're not into gaming they're not mm -hmm. doing anything else as far as like other avenues for them to monetize like selling merch off of that like the, uh this is a conversation the guys on all in got into also and one of the guys brought up some great points. It's like, it's crazy that they haven't thought of like why, like uh, stranger things, right? Extremely one of the most viral like series that was on there that like, how silly is it that when you're watching that, like afterwards, you don't get hit with a thing for like, Oh, buy the merch, like a t-shirt stranger, th stranger, stranger things. Or if you're streaming, like yeah. a, your favorite show that they're not also hitting you with merchandise. God, that would be brilliant. Of course and it you would be. Like order right after TV. Of easy. course it would be. Oh my God. That's brilliant. I know it's, he brought it up and I'm like, that's so true. Like why? They would have got me a hundred percent. Wow. And, and you star Wars. Cause you're more a fan of that. Like imagine you just fought, finished Boba Guilty. Fett and all these like, get your new Boba Fett cool cereal bowl. Oh yeah, or <laughs> limited edi limited edition yeah. collector whatever thing. There's yeah. only a thousand of them, or what? And get, they hit you with it, like get your new Baskar pants or whatever. Is that the name of the <laughs> Is it Baskar? <laughs> yeah, it's laser proof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to make sure. You know, eating a diet designed to build muscle, speed up your metabolism, improve your performance is amazing. But sometimes there's some challenges. High protein diets, for example, can sometimes cause digestive issues in people. Same thing when you bump your carbohydrates. You want better performance. Everybody knows a little bit extra carbs will give you better pumps, better strength, sometimes better recovery. Also, sometimes comes with digestive issues. What do you do? Well, aside from identifying the potential food intolerances in your diet, one thing you could do is supplement with masszymes. Masszymes are digestive enzymes designed for athletes, okay? So these are digestive enzymes you take with your meal that help you break down the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats and get them to the places that need to be used with less bloating, less constipation, less digestive issues. And of course, you get a discount because you listen to Mind Pump. So 
If you want to check them out, head over to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10. That's mind pump one zero for 10% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, our first caller is Carter from Kentucky. What's up, Carter? How can we help you? Doing good. How are you all doing? Good. Pretty good. So uh, first off, I want to say thank you all for uh, everything you do. Uh, I've been lis- listening to you all for about three to four years now. Uh, I'm a personal trainer and nutritionist, and I'm a little over uh, one year into my career, and you all have helped me tremendously. Um, I have all of the MAPS programs pretty much, and I use those for my clients and myself, and uh, they've gotten tremendous results uh, with those. So just to give you all a little background, um, I've been training for around five years consistently, and this year I would like to do my first powerlifting competition utilizing the MAPS powerlift program. Um, So my question is, uh, could I possibly implement uh, skills sessions kind of similar to the ones in the kettlebell for aesthetics program um, to kind of uh, increase my uh, volume and frequency with the deadlift squat and bench for extra practice. Um, I would implement these on the three non-lifting days during the MAPS powerlift program. And uh, would that give me any um, extra benefit? Uh, What kind of load would you recommend and um, how would that kind of help me? Yeah, what a, what a great question. That's a good question. So have you done mass power lift or is this going to be your first time? I have. I've done it before in the past. You have done uh, it before? I have, yes. How did it work for you? It did great. Um, I increased my one rep max on my deadlift by around probably um, 90 pounds. Uh, bench, yeah. About 10 to 20 pounds. And squat, probably around uh, 40 to 50 pounds. That's excellent. Incredible. So now, what makes you what makes you feel like adding extra stuff will make it more effective? I feel like the extra practice would be great. So kind of similar to how uh, sports uh, has skills practices. Like uh, I used to play basketball, for example. So um, we'd have practices before games that would walk through like drills and things like that, um, and then we'd have like free throw skills practices, three point shooting practices. So kind of just to give me extra practice with the lifts itself and really dial in my technique. Yeah, you should know. Did you notice that he put 20 to 30 percent of one rep max, which I think yeah. is, I mean, to me, that's the that's the move here. And I think his, his yeah. uh, application is is brilliant the way he's thinking. Yeah, I, I, the intensity. my advice would be different if you had not done MAPS powerlift, because what I would have said then in yeah, that case would have been yeah. run through it first. And then see how it works for you, and then start to modify it based off of your individual body and results and how your body works. So I think this is okay. Is it going to improve your progress or speed up your progress? I'm not sure. Uh, so but my advice is going to be do it because you've done it before, you've got some experience. But pay attention to how you feel. If you notice that even at that low load, that it's maybe reducing your ability to recover because mass power lift is is all ready programmed and planned out. Then I would take them out. Now I I'm gonna bet that it'll probably be okay. I think it mm-hmm. might help just with your skill and your technique uh, in each of the lifts, which is I think what you're you're asking about. Here's something cool, yeah. by the way. A little side note: they did they've done studies on athletes where they'll have them. For example, it was a free throw study where they had athletes just go through a free throw in their mind versus athletes actually practicing a free throw. Now the people practicing the free throw free throw did better. But the people envisioning the free throw did way better than people who did none of e- either one. So that's another thing that you can do that really doesn't take away from your – potentially take away from your ability to recover. You're not going to get any overuse injuries. Just by going through lifts in your mind, envisioning how it feels, what it looks like, it makes it, it makes a, a, a big difference based off of you know the studies that I've seen. But I would say experiment with this. But play, pay close attention because what you don't want to do is get trapped in the cycle of, well, I'm doing this. Even though I'm not progressing, I'm going to stick to it. Yeah. So you, you got to be ready to switch gears if you need to. Yeah, you got to definitely manage uh, appropriately the intensity. So I, I, you know, I'm glad you're already thinking in twenty to thirty percent kind of range. 
However, you know, this might actually affect your other workouts as well. You know, having increasing the volume there and the frequency, you know, it, it, it may it may start out as a good thing in terms of, you know, you being more um, being able to get into the groove, you know, more effectively, you know, your technique might improve. Actually, technique will definitely improve if that's the focus of it and the intent. Um, I would just really really be honest with yourself and, and see if you are progressing or if you're not. And so that that's definitely like intensity wise, you know, something you might need to adjust uh, even with your regular work. Yeah. Is this a raw competition or is it equipped? I would most likely be using uh, bell um, knee sleeves and wrist wraps. So okay. Uh, raw. Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's another thing I would do on these practice sessions. I would literally practice with the 20, 20 to 30% load. Okay. I would practice uh, like you're in the event. So while you're in there in vision, you're on, you know, you're all, you're ready to perform, getting into position. You've got the belt, the wrist straps, everything. Cause the goal, uh, based off what you're telling me and correct me if I'm wrong, the goal is for you to really perfect the technique and the form for your performance on, you know, game day, so to speak. Right. So I would treat it like the competition with that light load, get into position, envision yourself, people watching, you got the judges, mm -hmm. you're in position, get real comfortable with all the equipment that you'll be using, your positioning, you know, get as close as you can to the competition itself. That should, that could squeeze out a nice, you know, few percentage more increase in your performance. Listen, I, Carter, you, you sound like a smart guy. I, I love this. Mm -hmm. I I I think uh, I think you're on the right track. I think the way you even presented it in the the full written question with the idea of going at twenty to thirty percent your load, uh, you've already ran through power lifts, so you know what type of gains you should expect and how you should feel. So if you're overreaching or doing too much, you're probably going to know better than somebody who's never ran the program. Mm -hmm. You've got a training background. You've been an athlete before, and you've and you've applied these principles in basketball and seen probably your skills get better. I 100% think uh, squatting and def deadlifting is major technique. Uh, most of the gains I've got over the last five years in those lifts, it's been because of the technique, not because I built a bunch more muscle since then it's just been getting better and better the technique and if you like justin was saying if your intent of going into those extra workouts is set like that that i'm not here to work you know, out yeah crush it which uh, you 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 get it because you you, yeah. uh, you have done yeah. this in basketball you're, you're in the right mindset right when you when you did free throws and practice your your three ball at, on those skills days I know you weren't running lines and like killing yourself. Like that's not the the idea of that practice. So you get it. That's the same concept here. And I love this. And yeah. I think you're a perfect person to uh, play with this and apply it because you've already been through it and you have the the knowledge in the background. So go for it. And I'd love to hear uh, what what. Yeah, you, I'd love what, the feedback and as you go through this too, and also to you know even consider like some of the sticking points is where we can you know work on addressing those types of things and. Yeah. and um, you know, you know, place like deficit deadlifts or do things where, you know, uh, if, if that initial, if that initial bit of force is the problem, you know, to get, to get it off the ground or, you know, whatever position it's in, like really hyper-focus into those sticking points. Definitely. Yeah. So would you all do a, uh, one day, two day or three day kind of approach to this, or would you do a squat bench deadlift day just for this specifically, just really light load? Because it's practice and because it's technique, uh, I and I would and this is your first powerlifting competition. I would I would make it look like the competition mm. itself. So mm. you know which lift goes first. Like, I I'm I'm not familiar, right? So, squat. Right. So you do a squat deadlift bench or is a squat bench deadlift? How do they do it? It's a squat bench deadlift with three attempts each. There you go. So I would practice like, in that order, that. yeah, and and do the and practice each of them each time because the idea is to get better at those lifts with your technique. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thanks Love for that. calling in. Yeah. Thank you all. Such a great uh, question. I love the way he set the table. I couldn't help, but I was laughing over here when you were giving the, I'm familiar with the the study you were talking about. Where yeah. It, Cause all I'm picturing is somebody standing over a barbell, but not doing anything and just oh. envisioning <laughs> yeah. how ridiculous Shining like that is. Like it's that. seriously, I get, I get the point like yeah. of that. Well, well my, my goal but, was to say <laughs> besides, psychology. besides this, no. also go through your head. Right. I, get what, yeah. I get what you're saying, yeah. but I couldn't help but think of like a kid hearing that advice and going like, oh, okay, well Sal says I don't need to do it. I'll just, no, I'll just think about that. it. I'll just, <laughs> 
just, I'll just think just about sit it. on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it sounds ridiculous. I wish it was that easy. Uh, I but no, I mean, but it, it plays it, it plays a big role. No, no. I mean, stuff. and yeah. if you're if you're a fan of sports, uh, you know this. Like uh, they talk about this a lot. Like especially now, like we've yeah. we've we're there now, right? We've we've realized like how important the your mental state is and the ability to see yourself making the shot before you shoot the shot and things like that. So this was I separates totally, the elite athletes. Yeah, I totally. I totally. Get, you know that actually. Like I don't know if I told you guys this, but like what something that Curry did in the last year is like they uh, they shrank the size like a sh- his oh, shot the rim yeah for him to be it has to be a perfect Smart. shot and how it goes through oh that's great and he envisions like this you know nothing but net shot Very always smart. and uh, hitting the rim is a it's a fail so right and mm-hmm. so he just practices wow and practice, that's and really good does mental exercises with that like the the effort that he puts yeah. to being the greatest shooter of all time is is crazy well you know what what I liked about this question is it really highlights uh, what we've said many times on the podcast which is our programs are a really good template and the base, but the ideal program for you is always individualized, always. So follow our programs one time through as we've laid it out, and then once you start to kind of figure things out for yourself, you can go back through and start to change things and individualize things for your body because an individualized, personalized workout program is always going to outperform one that's one you know general for a, a large audience. I feel like that was the the best and only the, the the really important question that needed to be asked that you asked yeah because had he said because he everything else was set perfect sounds like a perfect guy to play around with this and test that out but even with his experience and knowledge and his idea if he hadn't ran it one time no through, i'd be like do it just because yeah, here's you the problem with that exactly you don't have a baseline to like right. let's say he would have got let's say it was his first time and he saw 80 pounds on his deadlift and you know, 10 pounds on his bit. He would go, oh, that really worked. Yeah. But mm-hmm. had, he didn't know that the last time he did it without doing any of that stuff, he saw even, even greater better gains. Right. right. So right. I, I think that's the thing that we always try and tell anybody that's running our programs because you get this, especially from trainers a lot who think they know everything, right? That, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to add this with Right that. out the gates. Yeah, right out the gates. It's like, wait a second. If you haven't followed the program to a T first, do that just so you can get a baseline and then you can play yeah. with it. And a big that. part of the performance on com- competition day is how comfortable you are competing. It's a big, big thing. So the visualization, the practice, what it, what your goal is, you're aiming to do two, two different things. Get your technique so good that it's second nature. So even though you're nervous, anxious, whatever, your technique's on point no matter what. And then number two, desensitize yourself to the stresses of competition so that when you do get in the competition, you've got less of that stress response, which screws people up all the time. I can't tell you how many times that happened to me where I'd go and get on the mats uh, during practice and I could, you know, I could go through 10 guys, no problem. Then I'd go in competition and I'd gas out after the first match. And it's because of the anxiety and the stress and the excitement that I just wasn't used to. Our next caller is Rob from Florida. What's up, Rob? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Hey, I just want to start off by thanking for all the content you guys have. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly walking around the house and thinking to myself, you know, um, you know, Hey, uh, what, what's better digestibility wise, you know, eating eggs raw, you know, pasteurized or, or cooking them. And, and, you know, I, I, I go and I, I search through your, uh, all your podcasts to see if I can find the answer as a you know computer developer i'm thinking you know how awesome it would be if that was thrown into like a ai driven app or something we're building so towards I, that I, I appreciate all the content you guys put out there thank you yep um so i'm uh, i'm a 49 year old um who has knee pain pretty often i wouldn't say that it's uh it's chronic knee pain but um I have two types of pain. One is kind of like a, a, a doll pain that I might have, you know, all day, uh, especially in the mornings when I wake up, I have that same kind of pain in my, um, in my hands and in my elbows. It's kind of that, that pain you felt when you were a, when you were a kid, you had those growing pains. The other pain I have is kind of a, a sharp pain. Um, when I either go up the stairs, down the stairs, especially, you know, if I do, um, like a leg press or a squat, and that kind of feels like, you know, when I, when it moves and has, it has weight on it, that the, um, the knee kind of falls out of its natural groove. And then I get a, I'll get a sharp pain on the side of that knee and that, you know, I might have that sharp pain for a while. I was kind of trying to get to the bottom of, you know, how to fix that so that I can continue to squat, squat properly, you know, get a deep squat, 
And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's probably something to do with, you know, poor mobility. I do have some poor mobility in my left ankle um, or, you know, bad form. Because I do notice that, you know, it, it kind of naturally when I go to a deep squat, it wants to, my left foot kind of wants to pronate out. So it's just kind of wanted to get your uh, your thoughts on that. Yeah, Rob. You know, maybe maybe I just need to strengthen around that knee or something. Yeah, Rob. I, um, do you have have you been diagnosed with any autoimmune inflammatory um, disorders? No. Okay. And have you had any diagnosis around the knee? Like, uh, have you had a, uh, anybody MRI it or look at it and say, "Hey, you've got no you know, X going on." Okay. No. So so I'm not a no. doctor. Okay. So um, I, I just want to say that first, but I would definitely. First off, there's a couple things here. We're one, we're dealing with what sounds like the first part sounded like a little bit of chronic pain or inflammation because you talked about your elbows, hands, and knees. So that yeah. that sounds a little bit more systemic, um, and it could be nerve pain, which uh, which would be one thing, or it could be high inflammatory markers, which could be another thing. Um, so I would just get that looked at, okay, just to see if there's any kind of chronic inflammatory issue that's happening. The second part sounds like classic uh, mobility issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can work on the mobility issue regardless of the first part, but I would definitely look into the first part to find out why you have this pain in your hands, elbows, and knees um, just to just to rule anything out. Okay? Well, do you think an, an, a nice way for him to do that himself and test that would be, I mean, I would, I would actually put you on like a 24-hour fast and see if that alleviates a lot of that chronic pain. If it does, then there's a good chance that that in, the it could be related to diet that's causing a lot of that inflammatory response. It could be, but when you're talking about like systemic um, kind of inflammation or nerve pain, I mean, the list of potential things is so long mm. that I would want to go and get the major things ruled out. Like, do we have any kind of autoimmune issue uh, that's brewing, that's chronic? Um, is there something that you well, know, don't you think it would point in that direction if by him fasting all of a sudden that, that damps that dampers that right away? I mean, depends, it, depends. It, like if it's a nerve issue, um, then then it, maybe not. You know, um, but I, I would just go do that anyway, no matter what. Just okay, look here, doc. I have yep, this absolutely. kind of chronic, you know, kind of pain. It's dull. Mm -hmm. And then what they might do is have you talk to a neurologist or you know, a, 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 basically you want to rule out anything major. Okay, is what I'm saying. What the first part. The second part, though, no matter what, the first part says will help. Okay, so the second the second part is, and when it, when it comes to knee pain, nine out of ten times it has to do with the ankles or the hips. Okay, because the knee, you know, it flexes and extends, but it doesn't rotate, doesn't bend laterally. But the ankles and hips do all of that. They rotate, they bend laterally, mm -hmm. they also extend, and uh, you know, they they also flex and extend. So I would work on, uh, and I would special, I would really place a special focus on ankle and hip mobility. So if you don't have MAPS Prime Pro, that's the program I would look at. And I would do the, I would pick two or three ankle and, and hip mobility movements. And I would do those like 10 minutes twice every single day to improve those things. In the meantime, if your squat is hurting your knee, I would, I would switch to a split stance exercise like uh, a Bulgarian squat or a lunge mm -hmm. or something where your legs are split, okay, so that you, you have one yeah. forward and one back, and while working on the hip and ankle mobility. And then as things start to get better, you can start to phase your squat uh, back yeah. in. Rob, what do, you, what do you notice when you – do you foam roll your IT ever? And if you do, what do, what do you notice? I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't catch the, the first part of that. So, Have you ever foam rolled your IT band before? No. Okay, I would love for you to do that. Yeah, the only thing that I've I've been, uh, you know, I just because I I figured you were going to say mobility, um, you know, because I did the I don't know the Dorsey whatever test, and um, what I noticed was that you know I was you know I, I have six inches on my right ankle, four and a half inches on my left, so I've really been trying to stretch out that left ankle, and I have noticed a little bit um, a little bit better results from that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my squats, I've been able to get much deeper. Well, Rob, but that's the only thing that I've, I've really done. Well, Rob, real quick, just because you stretch 
the side and get more range of motion does not mean you're improving the kind of mobility right. we're talking about. You really connect to it and gain yeah. strength where there's yeah, a yeah. lack of strength. There's a weakness there that's preventing it from stabilizing properly. You need to make sure your knee tracks uh, well. And so we really have to address a lot of the secondary stabilizing type muscles, which is where this whole mobility process highlights that. It highlights where there's a disconnect that we need to regain and recruit uh, properly to stabilize again. Yeah, because if you just get range of motion with Without strength, you're you're still going to have yeah. problems, right? So, so that's why I'm saying Prime Pro because that's what we do in there. You do get the range of motion, but you connect to it. I actually, Doug, can you look this up potentially? I know you're over there searching on Pornhub, but I want to get you to look up <laughs> on our YouTube channel. I think it was uh, Fix Knee Pain. I think I did a video on that, and uh, I address both hip and ankle mobility. I also show you how to foam roll properly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would I would do that. Uh, foam roll. Watch the video. Um, get a foam roll if you don't have one. Um, foam roll the IT and see how much that potentially relieves some of the pain right away. Uh, if it does, it really highlights the, uh, the the issue going on in your hips and potentially the ankles, and that's what's causing it to get really tight. Um, and that would be kind of, that video. I think would be what I would recommend you to do multiple times a day if you could, um, especially before you go into working out. Okay. Is that something that I would start seeing results within a, within a few weeks? Oh, uh, you should have, well, if, okay. if, if you just foam rolled, yeah. you would feel pain relief right away. Now, that doesn't right. mean you fixed anything, uh, but that's going to be a really good clue it that it's potential. For yeah. You. That there's a, there's a mobility yeah. issue and then it's not necessarily me. So, and I, I, I'll, I bet money that if I, if you did foam rolling on your IT band properly, mm -hmm. you would feel way less yeah. pain right away. Yeah. And that would get, that's a really good clue. When I used to deal with clients, Oh my God, my knees some feel so much better. Like, okay, I know what I'm dealing with then. It's not. Now you brought up the uh, knees over toes guy in your question. Do you have access to a sled? Do I have access to? No. Okay. I just, uh, I just saw, I saw him online. Um, you know, talking about knees over toes, and yeah. he's got and great, 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 great information. information. I didn't yeah. know if that was something I should be doing as well, right? You know, because I, because like I, like I said, I can feel the knee almost like it's coming out of its socket, not its socket, but out of its natural groove. And I didn't know if something like you know strengthening around the knee would also kind of help. Well, that's a stability issue, right? So yeah. we need to first really address that so you can uh, get your knee to, to, to be in, in its right track and be able to stay there, right? Uh, and then yeah. after that, we start adding in the resistance. So the, the sled's great just because you can it provides you with, with adequate resistance, but it's not too much impact in, uh, on the knee specifically. Yeah. yeah, you're talking about the knee coming out of the groove. You're talking about the kneecap. Yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah. kneecap. So, um, I mean, I do feel the, the popping, you know, like it pops crazy. And I, I did hear you, Sal, once say that that's really just air bubbles, and that's okay. Um, you yeah. know, I might get like two really big pops and a bunch of little pops, so it kind of feels like it's it's almost grimy. But sometimes I, I have to almost put a little pressure on the knee and kind of move it around a little bit so it feels like it goes back into yeah. that groove, yeah. and then I'm fine. You yeah, know? so if you look at the anatomy it of the knee... It does while I have weight on it. Yeah, if you look at the anatomy of the knee, you'll see that the kneecap kind of floats uh, over... There's a there's a groove that you're talking about. So underneath the kneecap, you'll have the cartilage. There's like almost like a little fin that fits in a groove, and, and it'll, it'll track in that groove. Now, if the knee doesn't have good stability because of hip or ankle issues then what it's going to do is going to push to one side or the other quite a bit. And over time, you can develop something called chondromalacia. This is mm -hmm. where the cartilage underneath the kneecap starts to get frayed, like jumpers inflamed, knee. and you start to develop uh, problems. Now, the issue, the, the fix isn't to necessarily go in and you know shave off the, the frayed cartilage. It'll heal if you fix the root cause of the issue. Now, if you go and get surgery, you'll feel better temporarily. But if you never fix the root cause, it'll just come uh, right back. And the fact that you said you feel better when you push on it or move it around, and, and you asked the question, should I strengthen around the knee? No, no, it's that's not the issue. The issue is probably coming from your hips and your ankles. Mm -hmm. It's it, the knee is just comp yeah. it's just compensating, just holding on. Remember, think of it this way, right? The knee bends in two directions. Okay, your hips and your ankles do all kinds of movement. They move in all the different directions. If they're lacking stability. What your knee is trying to do is it's using its ligaments to stay steady and in place. On yeah. behalf of that. Yeah, and over time, it, it causes a lot of pain and a lot of problems. So, I again, I recommend you go talk to a doctor about the chronic kind of systemic inflammation that you're feeling in, in multiple parts of your body. And then simultaneously, yeah. 
get you know use maps prime pro work on hip and ankle mobility the way we lay it out do that twice a day avoid squats substitute it with split stance exercises um and then and then start to phase the squats back in as you start to feel better rob do you do you uh, have facebook are you on facebook no, sorry, <laughs> I canceled my I canceled my account. Uh, okay, well, I, I was going to offer you to get you in the forum for free so we could follow up with you and just see how you're doing. Uh, bare minimum, what I'll do. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I'll I'll create an account for that. Okay, That's well worth it. Okay, well, and I, I have Prime. Is it is it in Prime or it's in the Prime Pro? It's, uh, it's the, Prime Pro. We'll yeah, send you Prime. Prime. Pro. We'll send you Prime Pro, okay. and we'll but, get you free access to the forum. Okay, so we'll use the movements in there. Yeah, thank you. After you go see your doctor, follow up with Sal. When you're in our forum, best way to get us to respond is to make sure you tag one or all of us, uh, and just let us know what the doctor said to you, and then uh, we can kind of help. Uh, guide you from there or there, we have a lot of professionals there's people like dr brink and dr shallow inside our forum so plenty of people besides just us that can help support uh what you're going through but get what sal said get, get at least the professional's opinion on what's going on but i have a feeling that uh when you do the the foam roll on the it you're going to feel instant relief right away which tells us that okay we need to work on the hip mobility and strengthening that and then the ankle uh and there's there's moves in prime pro that will will teach you what to do Yep. Okay. And then Adam, you said you had a you had a video out there as well. That yeah. I the video. Now, right? Did you find the title, Doug? Uh, there's a bunch of fixed knee pain videos on YouTube. So search "mind pump fixed knee pain" and you'll find it. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, I'm glad you guys didn't say that it was like some early arthritis or something like that. If it's, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something, Rob. Well, you, the doctor might su- say that you would be surprised. At, uh, I've worked with a lot of clients who were early stages of arthritis, osteoarthritis, and through just changes in diet and mobility exercises, pain was gone. Yeah. I mean, so it's not like a death sentence. Yeah. I think a lot of times people think it's a death sentence because there's you an can autoimmune change your recruitment patterns. Yeah, and there's an autoimmune component to it. But boy, there's a big there's I, I've seen some tremendous results with people uh, just from you know doing the right stuff. So yeah, get us the medical diagnosis yeah, and then we'll great. go from there. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's not diet either because, I mean, I eat super clean now. So, you know, if it's something about diet, I'm in real trouble. Yeah, nope. But, um, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thank Rob. you very much for the advice, guys. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Rob. Have a good one. Yeah, a good rule of thumb when you have uh, unexplained, like, pain in lots of areas, right? Yeah. There's a systemic <clears throat> issue that's going on. It's like, okay, my knees, my back. My, we've all been there, right? And it's either because I was sick or – you know, Adam, you experienced yeah. a hormone imbalance and you were getting stiff everywhere. Yeah. And so it's like you could have done tons of mobility for all the areas that hurt. It right. wouldn't have helped that much, though, because what was going on was kind of systemic, right? Yeah. So that's why I said that because when he said hands, elbows, and knees, I'm like, let's rule yeah. that kind of stuff out. But simultaneously, the mobility stuff's going to help the second part, which was that grinding feeling that he was I, getting. I, I can't got. wait to hear what happens when he just foam rolls the IT for the first time. Because it, that's one of those things that if you've never done that before and you're experiencing knee pain and you already kind of know you got some stuff going on with your ankle and or hip, it's like, yeah, there's probably a good chance that shit is tight as can be. Yep. And if he if he goes to roll that and it's excruciating as far as what it feels like when he rolls up and down it and then he gets relief in the knee right away, yep. you know that's where we well, need to go. Well, keep in mind, tightness is your body's way of trying to create stability where there right. is exactly. that. So. Our next caller is Jeremy from Oregon. What's up, Jeremy? How can we help you? Hi there, guys. Uh, thanks for inviting me on. I just have a question about bone structure and muscle imbalances because my arms and legs on the left and right side are different lengths. And I'm wondering if that's like the root cause of muscle imbalances and how I should approach my workouts yeah, to that's consider a, that. That's a really good question. First off, how did you get diagnosed with your with the, the differences in length in your right and, and left side and, and what 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 was the diagnosis? What was the cause of it? It's like no diagnosis. I just wear a size well, the size thirty two pad on one side, size thirty four <laughs> the other, Sal. <laughs> well it's not it's not that significant, but you can notice the difference from like five feet away. Like it's they're noticeably different sizes. Well no, here here's problems. why I ask. Here's why I ask because uh, I remember I remember so years ago, early trainer, I had a client and she came in, she's like, Oh my gosh, my uh, chiropractor said my right leg is you know an inch and a half longer than my left leg. Such a chiro yes. move. This and we went and looked and did the whole thing. And, and what it was is her QL, right? So this is a muscle that attaches to the hip, was just shorter on one side because it was tight. So mm-hmm. if you actually mm-hmm. measured the limbs themselves, just the limbs themselves, and you measured them from the same kind of origin, 
then we saw mm-hmm. that they were actually the same length. So that's why I'm asking the question. So is this something you've had since you were a child? Was there scoliosis or an accident or something that caused this? Um, no accident, but it's been pr- probably since I was like 13 or 14 that I noticed it. Okay. I would get it diagnosed officially, but I'm not saying you're wrong. I would do that also. But here's the here's the answer to your question. Could that cause muscle imbalances? Well, we got to understand what a muscle imbalance is. Imbalance meaning, um, I, I guess we could loosely define it as less than optimal muscle recruitment patterns. If you do indeed have one side that's a one or two inches longer than the other side, then your muscles are going to acclimate themselves to help you move and perform in the best way possible with that particular context. Okay. Now, how would I train around that? I everything I would do would be unilateral. Yep. So, and and, and not unilateral at the same time. Meaning, I'm not going to do a dumbbell bench press with both dumbbells at the same time. That's that's going to give you a little bit of a benefit. But when one arm is an inch or two long than the other, and you press the dumbbells both up, and one's higher than the other, now you're still going to have compensating effects. So I would do one arm at a time, one leg at a time. And what that'll do is that'll prevent some of these adaptations that you've already got, uh, probably just from you know living your life. So that's how I would train, and that's how I would do all my workouts, if that's the case. And the only thing I would add to that is uh, start with the weaker side. So whatever side is less dominant uh, of your arms and legs, start with that, let that dictate how many reps that you do on the other side. So let the weaker side dictate how many reps uh, you do for the other one, but uh, that's exactly how I would train this person. If the, if if you are actually, uh, you know, inches uh, off on because we're all. By the way, we're all. Nobody is perfectly symmetrical. There's not mm-hmm. a human being on the face of this earth that uh, their left side is exactly the same as their right side. So we all have a little yeah. bit of this asymmetry going on. So uh, how much of it would really depend on how how much problems that it could cause? Uh, do you suffer from any uh, aches or pains or back problems, or do you have anything going yeah, on? Do you have to wear a Do you have to wear a a, a shoe lift on one side? Mm. No shoe lift, but I my left shoulder gets a lo- like tweaked and injured pretty frequently. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I was get, just going to ask about your shoulders because it's going to go all the way up the kinetic chain totally. when we have these compensations. So uh, do you notice too, like if you're in good posture, are you uh, nice and symmetrically kind of square with your shoulders? Or are you kind of slouched a bit? I'm pretty symmetrical for the most part. Okay. Maybe a slight lean to the left. Okay, Jeremy. Yeah, I would go get an official diagnosis. Make sure the actual limbs themselves are longer and it's not coming from an, uh, you know one side being tight or, you know, like I can make one arm shorter than the other if one rhomboid is more, you know, activated and shortened versus the other, for example. I could do the same thing with my legs. Mm-hmm. So make sure it's an actual limb issue. Um, if it isn't, my advice is going to actually stay the same, though, with your training. I would still yeah. do one arm and one leg at a time and try and get them to kind of balance out. Now, I did ask the question about the heel lift and all that. Just a little side note, if you've been walking your whole life without a heel lift, adding one now is going to cause you pain. So sometimes people are like, you know what, I'm going to add this heel lift because it's going to balance things out. Well, you now you're so used to walking one particular way. It's a long process before you know adding something is going to start to, to feel good. So consider that as well. For sure. And then would I would I just go to my regular doctor to get that checked out or like a chiropractor? No. No, avoid the chiropractor. Yeah, I would I would go I would go to your 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 doctor, your your GP and see if they who they recommend you 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 go through for these types of uh, assessments. Could we get like Luna in on this in terms of like a if if we could get a physical therapist, I, f- I would feel would have a better assessment of Yeah, this. a PT would actually be awesome. You know, you could go to getluna.com. If you have health insurance, your health insurance will cover it. You don't need a, a, a general practitioner referral. You can go directly mm-hmm. to them, and they'll come right to your house. And I would bring this exact issue up with them, so you can have an expert actually diagnose you with, you know, with with yeah, what's, with something specialist. that'll be helpful. Yeah. Right on. That's getluna.com. That's it. Yep. Yep. I think getluna.com forward slash mind pump. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you need the forward slash mind pump. No. All right, just getluna.com. Yep. Thanks, Jeremy. Right on. Thank you, guys. No Y'all problem. Good one. No problem. Yeah, I've actually had more than one person come to me yep. and say, my chiropractor told me Same. my- Same. It's the old school chiro move. Oh. You know what I'm saying? It's the old school where they they pull, they do one of those like, uh, you know, yeah. the, the they used to have the ones with all the strings in the back. You know, now the more sophisticated ones have like a computer animation that takes a picture of you. Yeah. And, they go, and then they bring you and they sit you down and they go, 
oh, it's like the old uh, gym move that we used to do. Yeah. When people walk in, ooh, the gym's getting you. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh man, One come over, is definitely come over here, sit down. Let me show you this prepaid membership I could sell. You know, oh, say yeah. so. It's the, it's the same thing. It's like, oh man, you're. Your left side, you're like two inches off here, but let me, if we adjust your hips here and we do this, like come see yeah. me you know, three times, three I'm times a week. I'm 90% sure it's probably what you said in terms of like a QL or something else that's like nice and tight and, and trying to, you know, compensate for something. Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, it could be scoliosis. But see, because he's had no- I mean, It could be. He's got no pain though. He's not, he's not having any issues. And also he has no official diagnosis. If you have yes. legit one side longer than the other since you're 13, I mean, I don't know how he grew up and what his situation was, but usually that's going to, it'll warrant a doctor visit at some point. Like, okay, mm -hmm. we got to go to the doctor, see what's going on. And then they'll measure things and say, okay, here we have a growth, because that's a big asymmetry, right? So you're right, nobody's perfectly sym symmetrical, but you know, two inch difference in your yeah. arm and legs, that's substantial. Yeah, substantial. And that could, you know, that could mean that there's something going on. It could be scoliosis, it could be, you know, issues with your bones and your growth and, who knows? So I, I would definitely, you know, have that looked at and make sure. But yeah, the the whole I remember this this the way they measured her legs is she would she laid down on something and then there was like, you know, like you could see like it, you know, measured out inches on each side. Oh, your right foot is longer than your one. Well, yeah, because her left side is all scrunched up. It's not her leg that's longer. Yeah. You gotta measure the leg, not the all whole. the muscles that are like rubber bands holding everything together, you know, that when that know. shifts and, and it's off a bit, it definitely changes your entire like structure and how you carry yourself. Yeah, it, you you know, these these tricks are so insidious. I remember one time going to the mall and I was 17. You're talking about the arm one? Oh, dude, I I pissed the guy <laughs> off so bad. I was 17 years old, and they were selling. Do you guys remember when they were selling those bracelets yes, for the, baseball? The, the brass yeah, the ones. Magnets. Or, or, or the yeah, magnets. Yeah, and they're like, you put this on, your performance is better, professional, this guy and that guy. And some Johnny guy goes, Copper. The guy goes, come here, let me have you test this out. And he goes, watch this. He goes, stand on one leg, put your arm out. I did, and he pushed down, and I lost my balance. He goes, now put the bracelet on and try it again. He did it again. I was better. And he goes, oh, the bracelet's amazing. My friend's like, wow, it really worked. And I'm like. No, I tried it the first time. Yeah. You knocked me over. My body I knew got, it was coming now. Yeah, my body got better at it the second time. I'm like, yeah. nice, nice try. He's so pissed off, too, when I said that. So that's so funny. <laughs> Our next caller is Shane from Pennsylvania. Shane, how's it going? How can we help you? It's going very well. Um, I'm calling to ask about uh, Zone 1 and Zone 2 endurance training while lifting. Um, I know I've seen you guys previously talk to like a triathlete and said just don't lift. So... I wanted to see if like kind of lower heart rate work or technique work with lifting could uh, be an option. Uh, okay, what, what is your goal? What's your goal with, with, with your training? What are you trying to do? It's a good question. So I, last year I got pretty into triathlons. I was doing a ton of races and running races. And now this year is really, I want to focus more on the fit side and just the training aspect, um, like training groups and then uh, lift three days a week. Okay. So, so is your goal to be good at triathlons still or just be fit and strong overall fit and strong overall okay and you want more muscle or did you want to be and look the way you is do this like an training? off season for you training where you can focus yeah on exactly strength? okay yeah it's kind of off season like it's cold outside so i'm lifting as in terms of my cycling training got it and then are you gonna get back into triathlon training yeah probably like two months out do like race pace focus stuff what oh about, good deal like ocr type? yeah I, I would go yeah. no, i'd go two days a week not three days i go two days a week of traditional resistance training um, I would definitely do some mobility work during the week. And then I would do one or two days a week of, of cardio training because you don't want to go too far in one direction. Getting back in season is going to be kind of rough. Three days a week is a little, that's more like muscle building focus, which is fine if that's what you want. But if you have an off season and on season, we don't want to go so far off season that when you go back to in season, you're just trying to play catch up. So I'd go yep. two days a week of the resistance training full body. I would keep it traditional. Maybe yep. throw in more, you know, single leg or, or unilateral exercises than than, than usual, just kind of because you're you know you're all you're you're an athlete. Do mobility work on your off days. That's going to always be beneficial. And then the cardio stuff is fine. I would keep that in there and, and just to maintain some of your stamina and endurance. So when you get back in in season, then the way you train in season is correctional exercise and then train specifically for a triathlon. That's when you're not focused on building. You're just trying to maintain. Uh, your health and your mobility, and not have you don't an think you don't think he can follow Maps OCR and get all those benefits. I mean, there's a mobility focus in there. There's enough of a strength component that he's going to build some muscle, and then there's plenty of endurance in there, so he doesn't lose too much of his endurance and stamina. Why not follow Maps OCR? I don't think it's as 
off season as he would like. If if you're trying to build a little bit and stuff, I would go more traditional. Uh, OCR is mm-hmm. good. If if but then he could just back off some of the running in there if that's the case. So if you want to be and then it, just back off a little bit of the running that's that we've programmed in there and add in more mobility work instead, and then you get a little bit more recuperative. I think that program for the what he, kind of athlete he is. Will be pretty damn good. Maybe I mean it's it's a lot. Remember OCR was the a guys lot guys who wrote of that are fucking brilliant, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of volume. There's well, a lot if you're of stuff serious in that. about yeah endurance training specifically. Like Sal said, you don't want to stray too far because uh, it's one of those things that that's the the adaptation that you're pursuing the most. So we have to keep incorporating it somewhat. Uh, definitely the strength training, like two times a week, you're going to be able to cover that if it's full body. Uh, I do believe that does cover it in OCR and the grip training especially is definitely high highlighted in that as well um so you know between that and, the, and then building up you know form strength and um and everything else in there is really good for that i yeah. mean we we address i mean there's some things like he could he could shave out of that right yeah. so if you think it's too much running he could back off if he wants a true off season so just shave that off a little bit if the forearm training and grip strength is more than what he needs you could shave so there's a few things in there but all in all the way that is structured and programmed, I, I think, really fits his avatar. The person it could. Who is- you know what I like a little better for offseason for him would be performance, match performance, mm-hmm. to be quite honest. It's a little more general, more strength and general performance. OCR is a little bit more specific well, OCR. Yeah. Like he okay, he's he's triathlons right. I agree with swim. the mil- mobility focus, yeah. especially. I yeah. Think, I think that that can't be overemphasized. Yeah, and the run, swim, bike, that grip work is not really necessary. There's yeah, a that's, lot of it. Well, that's why I say you could shave some of that off. I mean, I'll, I'll concede to that. I mean, uh, per- performance or but I mean, I think there was a program that we've already written that is structured well enough yeah. that he could follow the blueprints versus trying to like create his own thing right yeah you're right recommend i'm like yeah you're right either either use ocr and shave out some of the stuff that you don't see applies to your goals um or follow maps performance and i think uh i think both would be be fine for what he's trying to accomplish you know what's really cool about this question shane well what's really cool about this is that adam and i both have a little bit of different opinions which means you get two programs for free so we're gonna send you (laughs) Both maps OCR yeah, and then report back. You know who had the map strategy. performance. You walk, look through will. them, and then pick one of those because I don't think you're going to go wrong with either one. Um, so you got both. You got both programs yeah. for free. We'll send them over to you, and then let us know what happens. All right, great, appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you know, good discussion around this is the difference between off season and on season training. You right, know, there was yeah. that article that was written about the Bills and how they took squats out of their training in season, mm-hmm. and they said, well, that's one of the reasons why we're not is injured. Uh, by the way, I think there's more to that than the story. Yeah, I don't think it's just squats. Yeah. I think it's just heavy lifting in season. When you're in season and you're competing, your exercise outside of your traditional competitions it's managing is, stress. That's it. How do I keep myself from getting injured? Yeah. Your goal is not to hit PRs. You can't push yourself in competition and simultaneously push your training super hard you're asking for trouble off season is when you push the training that's when you're really pushing the performance i definitely feel it's valuable for especially endurance athletes to go through you know a period of phase of you know more strength focus obviously you know still incorporating some endurance elements just to maintain the skill of it but you know just like anything else like you need to keep building the body back up to be able to support and stabilize the joints that are keep propelling you forward yeah that's why i can get behind the performance recommendation too so yeah. i don't i don't disagree with that i just think that we have something already that's structured enough that he could pretty much follow and maybe just mm-hmm. a couple modifications maybe ocr recommendation would require a few more modifications like there's another thing i know that we put in there that i'd probably have him shave off there's no real reason for him to do that like we remember we did after the every test yeah the test at every yeah. block doesn't yeah. really need to do that and doesn't need to train that intensely uh there so he could drop that maybe some of the forearm stuff like you were alluding to but other than that, I think either one of those programs uh, would do him well. Both of them have a, a mobility-focused component, which is the thing I think we're all totally. trying to point him totally. in. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam.